what would you like to see for Spider-Man India in the sequel? Yeah, that's a great, I've been thinking a lot about that. You know, I want him to interact with a lot of the other spider people, specifically from the first one. Hello. How are you? Good to see you again. Yeah, good seeing you, bud. This is nice talking to you now because usually when I'm doing these, I'm talking to someone in LA and it's like 3 a.m. in the morning, but you've done it at such a lovely time for me because you're here in London as well, aren't you? Well, I just left, so there was some confusion, but I am back in LA. But it's not 3 a.m., it's 8 a.m., so not bad. If anything, I've woken you up at a stupid, stupid o'clock. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, you're not my first one, so I'm all good. How did you find... London. Was there anything here that just blew your mind? <laughs> you know, I love London. I, I got, uh, I've, I've recently gone to work there a little bit, which is so nice. It's my favorite place in the world. I'm not just saying that. Um, I could just walk for hours and hours. Um, no, it's great. I love, and I love that there's so much more filming there now because I would happily take any job that's happening there. It's, it's great. I mean, I've got a few bits I need doing around the house. If you want to just come around and help me out there, that's a job for you. If you want to if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah, sign me up. That was so easy. Yeah, 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 get me the work permit, I'm there. In between your shifts, we could watch a little something, something called Miracle Workers. Yes. Oh my God, dude, I've watched the first three episodes. I'm in love with everything about it. <laughs> Although, not gonna lie, I am a little bit annoyed because the last time I spoke to you and Geraldine, mm -hmm. I said like, oh, you know, what would you like for series four? What genre? And Geraldine said, you know what I'd really want? I want to be in the future and there's robots. It's beep, boop, boop. That's what I want. <laughs> beep, boop, boop. Right, written that <laughs> down. And we all decided robots would be a good idea. Yeah. I haven't got a producer credit on the show at the minute. And yes. I'm thinking that must be a mistake, surely. Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. You have to fight to get any credit for anything. And, and someone else will steal that credit right from you. That Geraldine. Yes, I know, you really, you know, it is a tragedy, it is a tragedy. Um, but I'll, I'll make some calls. If you get me to London, I'll make some calls. I don't know if the money I'll make back from the show will be worth the flight and the accommodation and the meals. Probably not. Geraldine can keep that credit, that's fine. She can keep it, she can keep it, yeah. Who do you sit down and watch a show with? Because if it were me, I'd find it hard to like sit down with my mum and dad and go, oh yeah, that's me introducing Daniel Radcliffe to a wall of dildos. <laughs> I forgot that that happens. How do you forget that happens? That was such a weird day. We shot it a year ago and I just completely forgot that that was like a thing that we did. Um, I don't watch with my parents, um, but we actually do have viewing parties with the showrunners and the cast. Uh, not every episode, but we are doing it next week for the premiere, um, which is really fun. It's such a fun show to watch with people because it's like a genuine comedy so you can maybe laugh and it's so depressing to watch alone but um but yeah we usually will watch sometimes as a cast which is really really fun because we all are looking and getting to do the silliest things and we're all friends now so it's so funny to be like you know oh my god look at what we're getting up to like it's so silly and so it's really fun to watch with each other and, and see what the other people were up to when you were doing your stuff it's so funny because i was telling a few of my mates i was interviewing a few of the cast of it and i was like mm -hmm. oh yeah i've just watched an episode yeah steve buscemi has sex with a skeleton and when people take that out of co even in context it's kind of a, a spit take moment yeah you know when we read that in the script we were like there's no way he's going to agree to do this and like he shouldn't this is he's a legend and this is insulting to his body of work but to his credit he was like sure and i think that i do believe they had an intimacy coordinator that day um which is so funny to me <laughs> to have that for the skeleton but um i haven't seen it yet but i do remember the next day coming in and in the hair and makeup trailer everyone being like it was so bizarre and it was really funny uh, and so i'm really excited to see it <laughs> God. i think the writers at this point just have a bet going on amongst each other just like who can get steve to do the worst thing possible and they must be making a lot of money out of it they're making a lot of money and then to get daniel to just take his clothes off this is the other thing they've discovered is that 
he just get him to be naked as much as possible. Well, that's what I love about the show. I like seeing actors who I really admire and really respect, like like yourself, saying lines such as "a mousetrap fell on my penis." Again, another great line from you. I can't imagine you've ever said such a thing in your personal life. Like, how different are you from Ti Ninety? Very different. Um, I don't feel. I don't. I hope I'm not that vain, and I definitely don't rave or party or have as much sex with other robots. Um, yeah, very different. It was like uh, the hair and makeup and the spray tan and all of that stuff really did make me feel crazy and and very different from myself. But um, yeah, it's this is like just the best. It's the dream show, dream job, because we get to just truly, it's insane that this is the job. <laughs> and so, um, and we get to do it with Daniel and Steve and these iconic people. And so it's really, yeah, this season definitely feels like everyone was like, this might be the end. So like, let's just completely go crazy and do all of the things and we I think we really did as it goes on like it just each one is kind of insane and like not following any rules and um, we would always like look at each other like what the hell are we doing <laughs> this is so crazy um but yeah that's it's very fun well as you said like it could be the end no one knows and it, it made me be, think yeah. like your opening line is I think one of the best lines in TV history, when you get to say, I've been programmed to eliminate you for being a messy bitch. What, I want that tattooed across my chest. Jesus Christ. I mean, I think we need to end it because like this is, we've hit the peak, right? I think we're deciding now, like whether they want to make it or not, I don't care how much money they throw at me. It's the end because I, my integrity will not let me move past this. Your agent is furiously going, shut up, no. Yeah. <laughs> Get him on season five. I know, these lines are so crazy. I mean, we filmed it a year ago and I haven't watched it yet. So it's all coming back to me now. And I'm like, I almost had to compartmentalize and forget that that happened. And now here we are, like it's here, the matrix. I'm remembering it all now. I really just really want to make you think of all of those bad memories that you had, the, the awkward moments. I just want to be there for you. Thank you. There was a moment that they did cut where like I'm charging myself. <laughs> like charging myself on like a wall unit or something and like it goes like up my butt like the, the plug or something and Freya is trying to plug and it was like so crazy and and I'm just like no it's like this kind of USB and it just is so crazy but I think we all just kind of <laughs> are traumatized from what we had to do. Um, no, it was very fun. I'm actually genuinely the most excited for this season because it's the silliest and goofiest and and um, they brought back a lot of like the guest stars from the previous seasons and and each episode is like very epic. And I initially thought they were like, it's kind of Mad Maxy, and I thought it would just be Mad Max, but then it, there's like a Matrix episode, there's a Hunger Games episode, there's a Snowpiercer episode, there's like obviously a lot of Terminator, there's like, there's so much in the genre, there's like a time travel episode. And so it's very, um, it's just very fun and there's a lot going on. I mean, we got to talk about that line where you eliminate someone for being a messy bitch. You must have had <laughs> one hell of a rap party for this season. So out of the cast, who is the messy bitch? Who parties the hardest? John Bass is the messy bitch. He really is. He and he knows it. I asked him that and he passed the blame straight to Steve. So he and did. I believe you. I really believe you. Wow. You know, I know what John is saying. Steve was a messy bitch when we shot season two. Tell me everything. We were in Prague and Steve is an icon wherever he goes. And he was at some bar in Prague and these 20 something students in Europe were like, are you Steve Buscemi? And he was like, yes. And they were like, we would like to show you the nightlife of Prague. <laughs> and for three months, he went to the raves and the clubs and we would be in bed by 9 p.m. and he would be texting us at 2 a.m. being like, wanna meet my friends at this place? And it was so insane. And he had the best time of his life when he befriended these 20 somethings. And um, he it was incredible. We were all just in awe of him at all times. Um, but I would say overall, maybe John Bass is, is, uh, is the messiest, messiest of us all. 
So, you know, we were saying like, oh, yeah, Steve does some weird things on this show. I'm now starting to think he probably does weirder stuff out of the show. Yeah, Steve is not basic. Let's just say that. There's nothing basic about that man. He is up to things. Well, I can see why you didn't invite him when you went to Super Nintendo World with Geraldine and Quinta. Oh, my God. You could not handle him. You could not control <laughs> that man. No, no. I mean, he's sleeping during the day. There's no way, you know, he's going to make it to that. Um, but yeah, that was really... Maybe if we did invite him, we could have caught more lines because there was a lot of waiting around um, and we gave up on a lot of things. But it was very weird, you know, going there because it's also where the wizarding world is in LA. And um, the last time I went to Universal Studios, I went when they opened that because I'm a big Harry Potter fan. And it was before I had done the show. And so it was very weird for me and Geraldine and Quinta to ride that ride with Daniel <laughs> being like, come on here. And like, saying these like crazy lines and we just laughed the entire time because we we're like he looks like it is so weird to see him like as a child much, like telling us to follow him on his quidditch journey it's so silly like it's so weird like it, it was just very bizarre very bizarre does he know that you've got a, a little personal vendetta against him though that he got cast for harry potter over you Yes, we have discussed this um, and I have forgiven him. I have forgiven him um, because, you know, I don't want to hold on to grudges. Um, but yes, he, he does know this. Uh, I don't think it's the first time he's heard that from another person. Um, surprise, surprise. Many people that age group thought that they would were that character. But, um, but you know, now as I've matured into my 30s, I'm accepting that I'm more of a Hermione. So i'm fine with that like i'm fine with letting that go directing all of your hatred to emma watson instead of daniel now yes exactly i'm coming for her next yeah yeah, yeah. but I, I i do want to hear some some trash talk though who who really sucked who let the team down on the mario kart ride out of you geraldine and quinta well this is so disappointing but we didn't go on the ride because it was 240 minutes of waiting and we got in the line and you know at first me and Geraldine were like Quinta is too famous for this theme park and she was like no I can go it's fine it's fine and we got in that ride and my god um it we it was it was a lot of people wanted to speak with her and it got very overwhelming so we um we snuck out of that ride but um we did all the other ones but that that was very um that was that didn't work out <laughs> i know i know i will yeah i will say like a few people i shouldn't say this but a few people after were like the ride breaks down a lot like it's good you didn't go but we maybe we were like we'll wait for them to fix the kinks a little bit before we, we go back well next time me and you will go yes we'll sub out quinta because no one's wanting to chat to me in the queues no we'll just take daniel and he better have some privilege to be able to cut these lines i'm 99 percent sure he could own that theme park <laughs> if he wanted to yes come on give it to him he's keeping those lights running but who needs super nintendo world who needs a wizarding world of harry potter when i can go to the spider-verse with you well listen i don't think i haven't noticed behind you you see who that is there? Can you? Oh my God, I didn't even see that. Oh my God. Even I don't have that. Wow. So they were handing them out at the cinema. They gave me a spider punk one and I was like, nah, -uh. let's swap. No, Daniel Kaluuya who? No, no, no. Daniel Kaluuya? Exactly. It was right there. I wanted you to have it. You set them up, I'll knock them out and I'll let it yeah. and it'll look like I just completely <laughs> made it up on my own. Perfect. Have you just about managed to relax and come back from being in one of the, not even one of, the best animated film ever? Oh my gosh. Um, no, I'm still kind of in shock. So, you know, fun fact, I did not have a script or anything. Um, I auditioned for this movie in 2021 with lines from the first movie. So like, you no idea what it was and then began recording last year and I always like found the stuff we were recording really cool, but they wouldn't tell you anything. Like, what is this movie about? What is happening? Like any of that stuff. I did, they at one point were like, oh yeah, Daniel Kaluuya might play this other part. And I was like, oh my God, 
god that's so cool um but that was it and then i got to see it a little bit before it came out and was just blown away <laughs> Because I was like, wait a minute, this is, and I'll be honest, I didn't tell the guys this, Chris and Phil, but I mean, I was a huge fan of the first one. And I was just like, there's no way this is going to be as good. <laughs> so I was like, as in my head, I'm like, let's just be realistic. Like, what are you going to do that's going to make this like, and, and then I really, I thought it was as good and maybe a little bit better in parts than the first one. And so that was still so shocking to be like, wait, I just stumbled into something that's really good <laughs> without really knowing that. Um, so I mostly feel just kind of, and also, you know, doing something animated, you're like, I don't know if it's going to connect in the same way as like a live action thing. And this movie is just, people are seen it four or five times. Like it just is really crazy. And I'm kind of in awe that like, it's really connected so much um, with people. And um, a little bit like, how are they going to make the next one? <laughs> I'm just like, what hap What else is there to do? But I feel worried for them um, about what... <laughs> it's like you can only set the bar because we're so close to it being a perfect trilogy. And I'm like, now I'm just like worried about like what they're going to do. Because I just feel anxiety for them of what is left to do. I'm going to pitch one thing. Okay. Steve Buscemi having sex with Spider-Man's corpse, his skeleton. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. That's the one thing we haven't done. You are so perfect as Spider-Man India. Like, I love the fact that the guys brought you on to, in the writer's room to help yeah. <laughs> flesh him out. And yeah, as I said, you are perfect as Spider-Man India, but I also think you are perfect as Gwen Stacy. Oh! <laughs> I saw that video where you all dubbed each other's lines. Miles! Want to get out of here? This is the lobby. Oh God! You know anything she can do, you can do better now. Yeah, watch out! I don't. That was so crazy. Yeah, I. They just threw that. They were like, and then we're gonna do this press thing, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> How was that? It was really crazy. Um, yeah, those guys. Like, I'm such a. I feel so grateful. The, well, obviously, what they had written was really good, and then. I have to give credit to that. There's a lot of Indian animators that worked on the movie and they wrote Phil and Chris basically this letter that was like, we're so happy you're introducing this character, but like we have zero representation in this world pretty much. And this character will mean so much to so many people just lean in deeper into the cultural stuff and like don't be afraid to like make it really whatever and they were just like reached out and they were like would you want to sit down and like literally just said it's animation we can reanimate the entire sequence like whatever you want and we did that in january of this year we rewrote the entire thing and they were like it needs to hit these plot points need to happen but beyond that like what would you want to see like if you just as an audience member walked in and this was like what you saw and so we just like really kind of they just took all these ideas and and i think that's like such a testament to why their movies are so good because they don't have a lot of ego and they basically will listen to the best ideas and then just put it all there and what we had already done was really good and but they were willing to like push it and make it even better and i think that is how, sort of why those movies are so good so it was really exciting well, as you said it shows I don't, I don't know a lot of films that do that that would say everyone come join in on this process like let's get everyone's opinions and that late in the, i mean this is january of this year then they have to reanimate like all that stuff for this movie to come on i mean it was truly crazy um but they they don't stop it's very wild so um I'm, i just again feel for their health because that's a lot because it's like they have many other projects at the same time. So this is just one of many things they're doing. And now they have to somehow make a third movie that has to close out this crazy. And they are definitely going to shut you out of the door this time and go, no, he makes us work too hard. Let's not have him rewrite the whole thing the day before the premiere, please. Absolutely not. Absolutely. Yeah, they've had enough like they've yeah they're good now yeah well i don't know if you know much about beyond the spider-verse if you like mm -hmm. read anything about it
but I cannot physically wait until that comes out. I will I will pass out if I have to. So <laughs> what would you like to see for Spider-Man in here in the sequel? Yeah, that's a great, I've been thinking a lot about that. You know, I want him to interact with a lot of the other spider people, specifically from the first one, like spider noir and things like that. Um, and I weirdly, like, I would like to see him, um, I love his like sunny and happy disposition, but I'm really curious, just, I don't know anything, but like whatever happened to his home world and like, how he evolves from that whether he keeps that disposition or he's a little bit more like darkened by it that would be really cool to sort of see like because i love this idea of like he just everything comes easy to him <laughs> and it's great and it would be fun to sort of see him sort of do that in a, in in another movie but like evolve it a little bit and see happen and then i really want him to have like more of his like romantic story and like um really kind of go for that and like i love that was like one of the things that came up in the when we were rewriting it is i was like he should be really into like miles and gwen's relationship and he has this girlfriend he loves love like all of this stuff and i i kind of want him to become like the love therapist to the other spider people and um like spider ham and just be like tell me everything and just see <laughs> that's like this is like my dream dream scenario for him I've just typed all of that up. I'm going to send it to Sony for millions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You won't get any credit, but, you know, thanks for doing the work. Yeah. You know what I do want to see? I want to see Deadpool reference Spider-Man India in Deadpool 3. Oh, my gosh. Surely you can persuade Ryan to do that. I do know that Ryan and Sean went to see the movie in the theater in London, where they are working right now. Um... And so, you know, they are aware of it, uh, but I will not dare tell Mr. Ryan Reynolds what to do. <laughs> I am a smart boy and I know that he is a smarter boy and he, he whatever he does will be very good, uh, I'm sure. I mean, this is gonna ease the pain until Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out now. Okay, good, 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 good. So dude, thank you so much for chatting to me. All right, thank you, I had so much fun as always, thank you. <laughs>